Hello, my name is Brittany D. I am a psychic medium and spiritual teacher. My divine purpose is to assist in the expansion of the collective consciousness and to help you become more connected with the divine. This is a space to remember all that you truly are and ignite the possibilities of your highest potential. Hello, hello, and welcome back for another episode on the Addicted Household Recovery. So I'm going to tell you guys a story about whenever I finally surrendered and I broke the illy. Oh, it's so hard to say. If you remember one of my very first episodes, um, I believe it was the night that I got sober episode. Um, I talked about how I got this vision whenever I was handing in my, um, my bowl and my weed and all my stuff as part of the ritual, I was like handing it over. And, um, I got this vision of my brother and I breaking this bong. It was like this, I don't know, like it almost feels ancestral connected. It was like this bong that he handed down to me. He got it whenever he was in high school and it was like a freaking $2,000 bong, which most high school kids do not have, right? The money to buy, spend almost $2,000 on a bong. And um, it's called Illadelph. We call it the Illy. It's Illadelph, if you know what that is. And um, I got this vision um, whenever I was handing in my stuff. And I realized that that night when I was letting go of my addiction, I was actually, I actually deeply felt like I was letting go of my brother because that was where I really started. Um, if you listen to the whole episode, I explain how that's where I really started using and it was a means to connect and, you know, belong basically in my family and um, to try and gain some connection with him. And so, um, him and I together breaking the illy was like kind of like this ending of our, what I had envisioned as this ending of our previous relationship dynamic and how we previously connected. And then I, I was just going through some stuff with my family and family therapy and this, this and that. And, and I realized that by holding on to the illy and keeping it stored in my basement in hopes that one day we would, you know, this vision would come true and we would smash it together. I realized that I was holding on to, I was keeping that alive. I was holding on to us healing together. I was holding on to us starting anew together. I was holding on to all of these stories, um, instead of just allowing what's meant to be to be. And so, um, it was after, um, a deep, deep healing session that I, I just was so angry. I was so upset. I was like, I'm absolutely fucking done. Like I'm so done. I'm so tapped. I'm so done trying to trying, right? That's the problem, right? That's where the resistance is. When we try to make something happen, when we try to get someone to heal, you can't force someone else's healing process. Um, and that's what I had to learn was that like me trying to get anyone anybody to come along with me on a healing journey was trying to force healing and healing cannot be forced. And I wasn't respecting the timely manner that their soul has, um, agreed to deal with their karma and to deal with their healing and to deal with their own individual soul's evolution. And it was really painful to accept that, we were just on different timelines. Like I have been doing this work since I was 19 years old, consciously doing this work since I was 19 years old. You know, I went through my awakening in 2012. And so, you know, I don't, I don't really know where my family is at with their healing and that's not really mine to decide. And I can want us to have this big happy family picture where me and my brother are smashing the bong. And we're like, we're leaving that behind high five. You know, like I can have all these images in my mind, but the reality is, is I have literally no control over that at all. And so I went into the woods and I was so angry. Like I was so angry that my family just was not interested in showing up for me, wasn't interested in showing up for like healing together. And, um, in the, at least the, I'll say this <laughs> in the way that I thought we needed to, 
Um, so I was trying to control what that looked like, what our healing process looked like and when the timely fashion of that would be. And I'm not God, you know, I'm, I don't get to play that role. I don't, I don't get to say when, when we heal or how we heal or all of those things. And so in releasing that, in accepting that truth, cause that is the truth, um, I went to the woods and I raged. Like I talk about sacred rage. I raged in those woods of just like the level of betrayal that I felt was so deep. And, and I started to, to record, you know, and I was just still so angry. I was so fucking angry that I was like, this is just, I need to just step back. And so I've come back to tell this story when I'm much more processed. This was weeks ago now when I'm much, much more processed. And, um, and I just, this is a huge, I mean, I'm talking about like a two foot bong. That's like a half of inch thick of glass. And I just fucking, when I finally, like I raged and I raged and I raged. And when I finally was ready I fucking picked that shit up and I smashed it and every piece of it, every huge chunk that was still laying on the floor I or on the ground, you know, I got up and I picked that up and fucking smashed that too. Like every little tiny bit of that hope that I was holding on to was in that bong and I smashed it into a million pieces and was like, okay, fine. Like I'm doing this on my own. I'm doing my own thing. If they choose to do their own thing, they can choose to do their own thing. But like trying to get anyone to get me or to understand me is so fucking painful that I am tapped spirit, like message heard. I, this is exhausting. This makes me want to fucking smoke. This makes me want to drink. This is painful and it's not actually satisfying because if they're doing it, for you, then that's not truly, they're not doing it because they're truly sorry or because they truly want to make amends or they truly want to make the relationship better. It's not genuine. It's like to satisfy your fucking ego. And I don't want you to satisfy my fucking ego. I don't even want to satisfy my ego. And whenever I realize that my ego is running the show, I will recalibrate, you know, but I just didn't realize, I didn't realize that I was trying to push and force and control the way in which our family's healing looked like and the way in which their healing looked like and all of these things. And so it's really painful and it really sucks to let go of the pretty picture that I really wanted this to be and that I thought that this could be. But that is also part of the process is just being an acceptance that you don't have any control and all you can do in this illness and in this life is let go and let God, God will take care of it. And like that has been, if I'm being like totally fucking real, that has been the issue in my family's dynamic, like through our whole lives is that like, I'm like the intuitive, right? I'm like the psychic and I'll get I'll like see that God is trying to say something. I'll see that God is like making moves. I'll see that something God is stirring something up. And then I turn around right in my self-righteousness and I'm like, guys, God's saying this, this is what God's doing. I can feel it. I can feel it. It's happening. This is what's happening. Da, 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 da. And then because I'm trying to play God, they're like, fuck you, get the fuck out of here. Don't tell me what to do, you know? And what I didn't realize my entire life until just this last month was that if I would have just so many times in my life, if I would have just stepped the fuck out of the way and not tried to save anybody from what was coming, right? This is that psychic wound from what was coming. Then we probably would have gotten there a lot faster but I'm trying to, in my you know own self, self-sacrificing way, trying to control, fix, and manage the situation with my intuitive knowing, with my psychic knowing, and 
instead of just saying, okay, I see this is happening. So I'm going to go ahead and save myself and I'm going to go ahead and step aside and I'm going to start dealing with this shit and I'm going to start facing this shit and God will take care of them. And that's where the trust in spirit and the trust in the higher plan and the trust in what you don't actually have control over really has to come in because you do not get to play God. And if there is meant to be healing taking place, if there is meant to be, you know, like throughout, you know, especially in my childhood, it was like, if they're, if, if, if they're not supposed to be enabled anymore, if my, you know, parents or whatever was not supposed to be still enabling the situation or whatever it was, or if this was going to go bad, or if this was going to go sideways, if doing this thing or going on this trip or whatever it is, was going to go sideways. And I could feel that I needed to just step out of the way and let them receive their medicine. They either pick up on it or not, you know? And what my problem has always been is that I try and, you know, flail my, my hands around and be like, guys, don't go that way. It's going to be really bad. Don't go that way. You know, come over here. And that's my own sense of trying to save, you know, and trying to manage and control when it's like, I need to just save myself. And whatever happens, happens. And I didn't have that much trust in spirit whenever I was a kid and in my teens and even into college, I didn't have that much trust. And now I do. Now I really do where I'm like, okay, if you don't want to hear me, I'm trying to make it really clear and really easy for you. Like so, so easy that spirits like get the fuck out of my way right? I've got like all their shame lifted, listed out on a piece of paper. And I'm like, let's just hammer this shit out. And spirit's like, huh, yeah, that's funny. Like this is a soul journey. They need to dig for their own shame. They need to find their own shame. You think you can just bring it to therapy on a list and be like, Hey, this is all that it is. Let's just face it and wash our hands of it. Like, no, that that's too easy. And God is like, you're trying to save them. You're trying to speed up the process. You're trying to make this too easy. And it's not meant to, it's not that it has to be hard, but a, a deep soul cleansing, a deep soul journey is you finding that shit yourself and coming to the table yourself and coming from a genuine place, not from someone told you, this is what your shame is. And this is what you need to address. You know, that's not, that's not how this journey goes. And I didn't even realize that I was doing that until I had to be like, okay, I'm out. I'm officially tapped. This is way too painful. This is creating way too much suffering. I'm so done with being misunderstood. I understand myself. I validate myself. I trust myself. And so that means that I'm going to take care of myself and I'm going to save myself. And if, if you guys want to wallow in, you know, the abyss of resistance, then go for it. But I'm done screaming in your face saying, Hey, it's time. Hey, it's time. Hey, it's time. This is our redemption. This is time to heal. And if you guys want to resist, it's like I was getting the resistance in my face because they were resisting God. Does that make sense? Where I need to just step out of the way. They can continue to resist God. And then God can show them you can't resist me. It's like I was playing this buffer and then I was the one getting all of the resistance in my face when if I would just step out of the way, they can play that game with God. And it's a losing game, so I don't really have to worry about it too much. But maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not right, you know? Maybe my my psychic intuition is off for the first time in a very long time, you know? Like maybe that is true and maybe nothing needs to happen and maybe we all just live our separate lives and this isn't a redemption and this isn't our heal, you know, our soul's healing and our soul's going through an up level. Maybe that's not true. Maybe that's just true for me and that's okay too, you know? It's like yeah, this this it's this self-righteousness which is the illness. Whenever you can humble yourself and say, I don't know. All I know is that this is what's, this is what's true for me. And I don't get to say what's true for you or true for anybody else. I got to stay in my lane and know that this is true for me. And what was true for me was that holding on to that illy and holding on to that bong and holding on to that vision was keeping me tied. It was keeping me chained. It was keeping me holding on to this idea of us all healing together as one big happy family. And it, that was just not my truth anymore. I had to accept that that was not what was happening 
the evidence that I was seeing in this physical reality was that that was not what anybody else was interested in. That's what Brittany's interested in. So Brittany can take her little hiney over here and do what she needs to do for herself and for her own soul's evolution and her own life journey in this human experience. So I fucking smashed the fuck out of that bong <laughs> and I cried my eyes out, you know, and there was a lot of grief and it was really challenging and it was really hard. And, and I actually took a video of the experience. I might post that in the show notes. I'm still going back and forth. So check out the show notes and see it was a very, there's a lot of heart and there's a lot, it's very real. It's very raw. Um, I, I may or may not post that, but, or, or share that in the show notes, that link, but it, it might be down there. So, so take a peek, um, and see if you're interested, but yeah, it was just, it was a very, there's a lot of anger and it was very real and there was a lot of grief. And I, I just, I was in absolute, I couldn't believe what the truth really was, but at some point you got to accept it for what it is and recognize that you're not the one in the driver's seat, not of other people's lives, not of the unit, right? I'm in the driver's seat of my life. And may that, may that telepathically affect whom it is meant to affect in my bloodline, in my ancestry, but I'm doing it for me. And then as that reaches outward, that reaches outward. I trust that that will touch as it's meant to touch, but I am not meant to yank or pull those strings. That is what I realized. So that was my letting go and my shedding. And, um, I'm really glad that I did that. I'm really glad that I, I, it's been so much more peaceful to just, yeah, take care of myself, worry about myself and, um, really set some really firm boundaries and about communication and connection and those types of things. And honestly, I've, I've really had a lot of peace in my life. <laughs> it might sound that's like, yeah, it's, it's tough to say, cause I love these people, but man, it's like, I've had a lot more serenity. I've had a lot more peace. I'm not carrying anyone else's shame and their guilt and their shit anymore. It's like, no, that's not, it's not mine. It's not mine to hold. It's not mine to carry. And, um, you can have it back and I'm going to move on with my life and do my thing. And if you, you know, if, if things naturally align and organically align to collaborate in any way, I'm open to that, but I've let go of the trying to make it work. And if it does naturally align, awesome sauce. <laughs> so that's the Illy story. I hope this episode was helpful for you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This, this podcast has been really, really important for me to share my truth. And it's been one of the most authentic organic spaces that I have um, really been able to vocalize myself. So thank you guys for witnessing me. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Let's love. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed that episode. Please subscribe, leave a review. And if this was impactful for you at all, please share it with others. This is how we can help each other. Much love and namaste.